Yep. <laughs> <laughs> no, one gets, be no one gets out clean. <laughs> <laughs> Even the camera. <laughs> <laughs> interested in this idea of the Anthropocene, I'm interested in this idea of memory and loss, and also particularly solastalgia. What solastalgia is, solastalgia is the distress that you feel when your environment changes and you are unable to leave. Anything to show you? No. I have bodies. <laughs> Yours, mine, and so we can share about those bodies and how I approach working with bodies. It's amazing how a taste of something makes you feel in your whole body like you're on a trip. Mm -hmm. You know? Like I'm like I'm traveling. Because it's sure. weird. Yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah. From here. yeah, but it's funny that to see that if I taste something like that, and the first thing I try to do is recognize, I recognize this, I recognize that, mm. and in okay. a way, I wish I would just like ah, shut up. going to concerts of new music. I love going to concerts of early music mm. um, and Indian music and mm. many other kinds of music, but I hate going to concerts of contemporary music. Do you go to rock music or folk music, pop? I went pop? to in my youth, yes, but now not, no. no. Um, I hate listening to music on CDs or on sound files. And I could almost say that I hate music in, in a very visceral sense. I don't want it to be part of my life. Um, and yet, I'm always perpetuating this hate to music <laughs> um, by making you new things the object of hate. Music. Well, the hate is, is, not, is not this kind of despicable hate. It's a kind of um, hate that I have of something that is, that can absolutely, that, that's my feeling, it can absolutely um, take possession of me. Really, just um, for me, something 
that's an amplifier of what's going on inside your throat, inside your mouth, and, and through the mouthpiece, through the lead pipe, and out, out the bell. And um, around here, um, things get very funky. And, and when you clean it out, there's a lot of green stuff, um, which I love. I think that's very cool. And no one's ever made a piece about that, because it's usually just still seen as a totally um, disgusting household chore that you have to clean out your instrument. It, it makes me think of the uh, the notion of the the familiar, the, the the thing, animal or not, that accompanies a god or a goddess or a, or a, another a non spiritual mm. person. Um, that is the externalization of the self, but also at the same time the self. So. Athena's familiar was the owl, right? And yes. So it was the symbol of intelligence and rational thought. Mm. But then it was also the thing that could move around without yes, her and then yeah. come back to her. So in some ways, the flute has become your familiar in my Probably, in my reading, yes, yes. That things of you went into it, but then because mm. it was also you mm. in a different form, it gave back to you this sense of yes. And there's a very, very close relationship <coughs> between the instrument there and me. <laughs> is my instrument is I guess is what I, I want to say um, I feel like maybe the things that are in my bag like I feel like more dragging something along the floor would be my instrument than playing that uh, and that like other of it like the the kind of alienation that I feel toward it because I feel like everyone wants me to play that <laughs> like, who else is going to play that um, I, I want that to be more shared. open yeah. like a shared experience I'm not pursuing uh, carnatic music because I know I can't be an expert in it but you know it's there, and it comes out, you know, vocally uh, somehow, just as everything else comes out. Uh, the pop music I listened to in the nineties, the new music that I've been immersed in as I was studying um, peers, radio, everything, uh, animals, environments. Thank you. 